Hey guys, let's do radio navigation with the ARC UD radio set in the hip. This radio is designed for emergency search and rescue. It would be radio signals typically broadcast by ground units that are in need of assistance. There are three different modes we can use for this. There's a single UHF channel. There are some preset six preset VHF AM channels. And then it can also be used in conjunction with the R828 VHF FM radio with its 10 preset channels as well. So we're going to take a look at using all three of those different modes, but first we need to hop into the mission editor and look at how we set some of that stuff up. Okay, so in the mission editor, if you want to broadcast a sound on a certain frequency, you have to place a ground unit to do that. So on the left, we're just going to grab a ground unit. doesn't really matter what it is. We're just going to place it here. I've got a little Jeep and then on the right hand column here under advanced waypoint actions, we're going to do two things. We're going to add under perform command, you'll find set frequency. And then we're going to set the frequency to whatever it is we want to tune. So I think it is 243 on AM. And then we can set a signal strength in watts for whatever uh, signal strength we need here. And this should allow us to tune in from the RQD on the UHF channel. And then give it a unique name. And then the next one is we add another here under perform command, we can do transmit message. Again, give this one a unique name. If you set this to the same name for multiple units, if you change the file associated to this name, it will change it for all of the units broadcasting something on this name. So keep that in mind. So then we go into select and we can pick a file. They have to be .wave or .og and you can preview it here. Now, if you look at the duration of 28 seconds, when you loop uh, an audio file here, it's only going to loop a handful of times before it just stops. I think that's a bug in the mission editor that's been there forever and ever. So you're better off to take this to, a, um, to an audio editor like Audacity and extend the length of this, like manually loop it a bunch of times so that it's about five minutes long. And then when you hit OK, you can check this loop box. And then if it loops five times and the duration is five minutes, you're good for about 25 minutes worth of music. If you don't do that, this will play, you know, five times over 30 seconds and in three minutes you're done and it won't play anymore. So just a little tip for that one. But once you have that, you have it setting the channel, you have it setting the music it wants to transmit. That's pretty much it. You're done. You can now go into the game and you can tune into this frequency and then follow this or track the signal. All right, back to the cockpit. Okay, so now that we're back in the cockpit, let's have a look at the instrument panels we'll be using for the RQD. From the pilot commander's seat, we really just have right here, this little switch underneath our heading indicator will toggle back and forth between the ARC-9 on the left and the ARC-UD on the right. And that'll control which radio this heading needle will track. Right now, we don't have anything tuned, so it's not tracking either one. We're gonna leave it on ARC-9, and then I'll show you flipping it later. That's it for the pilot commander. From the pilot navigator seat, quick note that we do not have that switch here. The pilot commander can only track the ARC-9, he cannot track the ARC-UD, so we will have to fly from the left seat for this one. Now again, if we look straight up, we have two radio panels that we care about. So we have our main radio select and volume control panel up here which uh, we can set to arc UD. Now it's something I didn't notice or I didn't point out in the arc nine video that I should have pointed out is that this is really just for listening to the signal. You do not need to have this selected here in order for those radios, the uh, radio navigation to function. You can have this on your primary radio and do all your communications while still tracking a signal on either the arc nine or the arc UD or both. So we'll uh, leave it right here for the moment. And then the main panel we care about is this one here, arc UD, and it says right in the corner there. So we have a couple of options. Uh, these channels in the middle here, these are our VHF AM channels, and there are six of them. They are preset. If you look in the manual, you will see what all six of them are. So your units in the mission editor have to be set up to match one of these frequencies, otherwise you won't be able to tune into them. You have a volume knob here, which we're going to turn all the way up for now. And then you have this VHF UHF selector. And this controls whether you're tuning into the VHF, one of these six preset channels, 
or the single UHF channel. And if you have it on UHF, then the channel selection you have here won't matter at all. There's only one UHF channel. So we're going to start with that one. We're tuning into a local radio station, and we're going to tune into the UHF one and then flip it to narrow. Now, narrow is the one you want to use for normal operation. Wide, you'll find this light illuminates as you get closer to the signal, and you can switch to that. But narrow will give you the greater range. And then pulse is not implemented in DCS, so we don't have to worry about it. So let's flip to narrow and see if we can pick up the signal. So the green light is good. That means that we're getting a signal. We've got something to tune into. And then we don't hear anything because we haven't flipped it to RQD. So this is just controlling, like I mentioned, whether you hear the signal. Glorious. All right. So if we come back down... And then we go back to the pilot commander's seat. And now we can flip this to track the ARC UD. And now you can see it's tracking over there. Now something else that I didn't mention, and uh, big thanks to Deepak for bringing this one up. Because this gets a little bit wonky and loses its track and then bounces all over the place, it's a good idea to set your course indicator here. And then that way it'll give you some reminder of where you're supposed to be going even when this needle goes all out of control. So we're going roughly on this course here, about 165 or so. So let's go find this radio station, and then we'll show you the other modes when we get there. Alright, so I can already see the radio station just up here. There's the tower in the building. So we're just going to come up and set here. It down. But yeah, this works just like the Arc 9 in terms of guiding you in as long as you're tracking the right radio. Oh, it's just going to play the same thing over again. Right on. Must be an all anthem day. Alright, so here we are at the radio station here, and we're going to change to a different mode of tracking. So let's get off the UHF channel, and we're going back to the VHF channels. And I've got a unit set up to transmit on channel 4. Excellent. So where is this coming from now? Let's go have a look. And again, we can't see it from here. It's just up there, right over there. Now, as with the ARC-9, the ARC-UD will not give you a distance to your destination, to the signal. It will only give you the bearing. So it's basically on you to figure that out for yourself. And there's a couple of rudimentary ways you can do that. One of them is to fly at a bit of an offset to the bearing you're given and to see how fast the needle moves. That'll give you an idea. The closer you are, the faster it'll change. So we're just going to dial this in. And now the closer we get, the more that needle is going to change. And that should give us some approximation of how close we are to the signal source. Kind of rudimentary. This one doesn't have any way to tell you what the distance is. but And as we come over the trees, that needle's moving quite a bit. And there's a Tomcat down there playing the Meteor soundtrack. I'm going to say that's our signal source. Let's go uh, sit down and have a look at this here Tomcat. So here's this beautiful Soviet Tomcat just sitting out here in the middle of a field playing the Meteor soundtrack. And we have one final mode that we need to show in the Arc UD. And that's leaving this the way it is now. We'll just flip off the channel. And you can, if you can't tune to one of these six channels, if you need to tune to something else, you can extend this functionality by pairing it with the R828, which is down here. Now, if you haven't watched the video on radio communications yet, I suggest you go watch that one first. It's going to show you how to use this radio properly. But basically, we're just going to tune into channel 7, which we set in the mission editor. I'm going to tune the channel. And then flip this to homing.
And there we go. So now it doesn't matter which channel we have selected up here. We're tied into the R828 radio. That is 10 presets on VHF FM only. And we're going to go find that signal now. Listen to the song and see if you can guess what plane we're going to find at this signal source. So there we go. Oh, and there we go. Right down there is our plane. And it's a Hornet. So let's go land. Alright, so there's our Hornet on the ground. And that's pretty much everything for navigating with the Arc UD in the hip. Let's just turn that off. Now, if we wanted to get home, the easiest way to do that would be to tune into the inner or outer ILS beacons using the ARC-9, which we know how to do from last time. So we could just set in here 4, 9, 0, flip over to main, and then turn that on. And then this will give us, there it is, it'll give us a bearing back to Cavaletti. So there's how you can use the ARC UD to navigate to either VHF AM, UHF AM, or VHF FM using the R828 as an extender in the ARC, using the ARC UD in the hip. I hope that made sense. I hope I covered everything. If I missed anything, got something wrong, please let me know in the description below or in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.